Hello and welcome to Child Trends brought to you by Tile Club. I'm your host, Lindsay Flukiger, and today we're thrilled to be chatting with Farah Wilson, a shining star in the DIY design world, a wonderful mother, and a seasoned Instagram influencer. Farah, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. We're so excited to sit down and chat with you today. Um, Let's just dive right on in. So, Vera, can you tell us a little bit about your journey into the DIY space? What inspired you to begin and how has being a woman in this field shaped your experiences? Wow, that's a loaded question, a great question. So I originally started um, an Instagram account in 2019 because I was looking for camaraderie. I was looking for community. I was looking for uh, support of other women, other moms who are interested in home decor and decorating their home and just transforming their spaces into livable, friendly spaces, but that was still elegant and beautiful. And I started Instagram and I kind of found that and it, it was like almost love at first sight because it was great. The first week, the first couple of weeks, I started meeting different women and interacting with them. And we started sharing and bonding and, and really creating and building community. I never thought that this would lead to um, an influencer um, lifestyle or status or work, um, but it really was because I needed to have an outlet. I was a professional woman working professional career in marketing and communications. I've worked um, in that field for years. That was my dream job, but I was still feeling unfulfilled in the sense that there was this other creative side of me that I wasn't tending to. So that's kind of how it started on Instagram. I love that. And, and as far as DIY is concerned, I think what um, I love when people tell me I can't do something and I'm like, Oh, yes, I can. <laughs> and I also love when you're working with different contractors. Like I typically have a carpenter and a, an electrician on hand because I'm always doing stuff around the house. And some things are just above, above my pay grade and some things aren't. But when you've had contractors who keep telling you, yeah, I'm coming. I'll be there next week. Yeah, I'll be there so and so. It's like, okay, I can do this myself. I can DIY it. I can learn how to do it. Mm -hmm. And so that's kind of how I started doing things on my own because I got tired of hearing, I'll be there next week or I'll do this when or I'm kind of busy right now or your job is too small. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll show you. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> like having a never ending honey do list that just doesn't get checked off. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yes. So I was checking out your website today and I just have to read this to our listeners. So, and, and everything that you just said really aligned with your intro on your website. So for our listeners out there, please check out the fairafix.com and Farah's intro on the website says, I'm really glad you're here. If you, if like me, you identify as a busy mompreneur, a domestic goddess, totally obsessed with home decor, a DIY chick, easy peasy solutions, the hostess with the mostest love to entertain. And as an overall awesome and imperfect being, I love that part. You've landed on the right page. And I just love everything that you had to say there. It's very authentic and real and kind of sounds like exactly the purpose behind what drove you to get into this space. Yes. And that's part of the reason why I've, I think I've maintained or remained in this space because there's so much other stuff going on out there that you really want to have these real authentic connections with people and you really want to create your own tribe. And to do that, you have to show up as your authentic self. And plus you have to create impact. When I do simple hacks, I have a hack I do on Instagram every, every Friday. It's called Farafix Friday. And on, on there, I teach people how to do very simple, basic hacks, things that are useful. A lot of them are for moms, a lot of them are for home decor related. And the people who will say, I just bought that because of you. This was really help, really helped me. It saves space in, in my fridge. Oh my God, that's, that's creating an impact. That's the impact I want to create. I want to be helpful. I don't want to come on here and just show you my beautiful home. So what? You know, we all have beautiful homes. Um, but I really want to be able to share with you and we collaborate together and we have a good time together. And when people say, I bought this because of you, or they come back and they say, I got this last week and it's really helped me working on the laundry room with you guys. I recently installed a little gadget and someone came in and said, I saw it on your page. I bought it and I love it. 
And then another person said, I just bought it. I'm looking at the instructions. It looks a little weird. I'm like, whatever you do, put it in the stud. Ignore those instructions, put it in the stud. Otherwise, it's going to fall out talk talk o'clock in the morning because I know. Yes. (laughs) So I love that kind of connectivity. And I love when people don't take themselves too seriously. You know, I am the hostess with the most. Everyone knows when they come to my house. I always have everything you can think of. But it's casual. It's relaxed. It's fun. Um, That's what life is is about. You know, life is too short for us to be all serious all the time. Absolutely. Got to have a little fun in there for sure. Well, speaking of collaborations, we have to date done two wonderful collaborations with you. Um, We cannot say enough good about how everything turned out with those renovations. And the first one that we did together was a one room challenge with your fabulous kitchen renovation using Tile Club's Mallorca White subway tiles. And can you tell us a little bit more about that project and what made you choose these tiles to incorporate into your design? Um, what happened with this project was I wanted to do an update to the kitchen, but I wasn't really sure where to go. And this is where you were just talking about authenticity comes from. Almost every kitchen I see in these beautiful magazines are white kitchens. And white kitchens are fabulous, but brown kitchens matter too. So I have these beautiful maple ca- ma- maple cabinets that I love. They're in great condition. And I'm like, do I paint? Do I not paint? Do I succumb to the pressure of what I see on Instagram? Or do I remain authentically me? So I'm like, you know what? I'm keeping my cabinets. I'm going to upgrade them, brighten them up, give this space some life with some fabulous backsplash tile. Looking everywhere, I couldn't find anything that spoke to me until I landed on that Mallorca white. It is gorgeous. I get compliment on it to this day. And I paired it with this absolutely beautiful snow white um, grout. And it has minimal grout lines. So you just see a sea of white. I love the imperfections in it because of the way it was handmade. Um, I love everything about it. And it has completely changed the look of the kitchen. I didn't have to paint my cabinets. And that goes to show that if you really pair good design with authentically you and you really make good choices, it has brightened up the whole space. I mean, I have people come to my house and go, did you, did you change the cat? Did you know the backsplash? It does. And it's such a big impact because it is a, you don't realize it, but it's a vast space. Like it takes up a lot of space. It's only about 24 inches high. But when you look overall at the expanse of the kitchen, that tile works beautifully. I mean, I it, I can't say enough beautiful things about it because it, to this day, I walk downstairs, I look at my kitchen and I'm like, yeah, still love it. Absolutely <laughs> love it. And it's been about a year and a half now, I think. And it's held up perfectly. Like it doesn't have any, any dings. And, and I have two young kids. Okay. I have one who's six years old and who thinks she's 12. And I have one who's nine. And as a boy, he splashes everything from peanut butter to jelly to spaghetti sauce, everything. A quick wipe and that's it. That's so good to hear. We are so excited to hear that. And and I love what you said about how just upgrading that backsplash space can make such an impact. I'm in a similar situation right now. We have a very small kitchen, but I love the richness of my cabinets but I kept thinking like, oh, maybe we should paint these. Why? Because I'm getting a, a backsplash um, installed and I'm going with our Lake Beige uh, subway tile, which I like. Um, but I've been contemplating changing the cabinetry a little bit. But I think same thing. Like, I just really love the wood and I'm just going to go with it and, and see what happens. So Yeah, I, I updated the hardware on the, mm-hmm. I think I had like a stainless steel color before and I went with a matte black. Um, and I, and again, the backsplash completely changed the face of the entire kitchen. I never would have imagined something so what you might consider small and significant can make such a huge, huge difference. And yeah. it's been, it, I am not changing this kitchen for years to come. I'm extremely happy with it. Um, I just, it, it, it's so nice when you have a, the space that you congregate to the most and going in, in the most as a family. You know, it's pretty. It's nice to have a yes, space. Definitely. Oh, and the luster. The luster is perfect. Like, I can't say enough good things about it. 
Yeah, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. The texture, the luster that is in, in the Mallorca tiles are one of our top sellers because of that um, hand look, handmade look and, and the gloss on it. So we're so excited to hear that it's holding up and it's it's made such an impact on your space. So you mentioned um, introducing your followers to hacks or to different items that you might install. Um, like you were mentioning your laundry room. I have to bring up the pot filler in the kitchen because <laughs> that might have been the most controversial comment that we kept seeing is like, so just take it to the sink. And I'm going, no, 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 no. I would do the pot filler too. So tell us about that. Has it been worth it? And what was kind of your thought process behind installing that? Um, so many years ago in our previous house, when we lived in town, we had a pot filler installed and I loved it. And I've always thought it was a nice, a nice little deliciousness to have. Let's just, let's just say that. It was a nice little extra. I loved it. And I wanted to have one again. So when the opportunity came for us to do a new backsplash, I'm like, okay, now I, now I can legitimately cut into the wall because I'm installing a new backsplash anyway. <laughs> so it was a must. And even though it's only, I'm going to say three feet away from um, my sink, I use these very nice caraway pots and pans. And those ceramic pots and pans are quite heavy. And when they have water in them, they're even heavier. And I have two kids and a husband and a dog, and we make dinner at home about four times a week, if not more. And I'm not going to carry a pot from here to here when I don't have to. You know, mm -hmm. I use it to fill up the tea kettle. I use it to fill up for to make pasta. I use it for I use it all the time. So it, it made good use for us. And it's okay to treat yourself to a little luxury every once in a while. Why not? Especially when I look at, and this is my justification, I didn't spend money to have the, the everything sanded and repainted. I kept the cabinets as they were. And so it was okay to add some bells and whistles in other places. Mm, I love that. Yeah. And just being smart, like working smarter, not harder, I think goes a long ways in all aspects of life. <laughs> so, but my, my, my husband's response was, oh, well, you must have made it because you're getting uh, backlash. <laughs> whenever, you get, whenever you have a post where people just feel the need to just attack for no yes. reason, then that's when you know. Exactly. exactly. Yes. Yeah. But oh. yes, it was definitely. <laughs> we we were we were just having a heyday what, reading all the comments coming in and we're like we're team pot filler all the way so <laughs> it's been a great addition I recommend yeah. anyone who wants to try it to go ahead and do it pick the right time it is an expense you have to have a, a licensed plumber to come out and do it so if you're going to do a new backsplash that's the perfect time to add it um, and then also you realize afterwards how will you live in the space and you're like okay this was worth it it makes sense Right. Yeah. Love it. Well, I'm glad that we got to experience that through you. So then now we can, uh, us watching and following along can be like, we can do that too. So <laughs> good to know. So it's, it's a lot easier with, you know, reinstalling or updating your backsplash. That makes a ton of sense. Yeah. Um, so let's move on to um, our next renovation project that we've teamed up with you to do, which was your laundry room. And we are anxiously awaiting the reveal on that, but um, yeah. it's clear that you're versatile in your design choices. And so we'd love to hear more about that recent renovation using our Santorini and white picket marble it's tile. Blue picket, correct. Yes. Wow. So what drew you to this particular tile and how did it enhance your laundry room? Um, so anyone who's followed my page for a little while knows that I'm not, I'm kind of afraid of color. I don't do a lot of color. My color palette is always grays and tans and whites. And my pop of color is almost any shade of blue. Mm -hmm. I'm very partial to blue because all of the colors I love remind me of my favorite place ever, which is the beach. So they're always those sandy colors and the the grays and the light blues, those are the colors that speak to me. And so throughout the house, these are the same colors that we use. And so I wanted the laundry room to have a little extra, a little oomph, because it's a small space. We never had a laundry room before. We had a laundry hallway situation, but we didn't have a laundry room per se. And I'm like, you know what, since we're reconfiguring upstairs, 
let's carve out some space for a proper laundry room, however small, but still a proper laundry room. And then let's add a little something to it. When I stumbled onto those tiles, again, just the seas parted. I was just like, oh. <laughs> I mean, I just felt, you know, you know, when you just see something and you just love it. Yes. And when I received it and I opened it, I just, the, like the reactions y'all see, are my true reactions. Like I am that extra. I, I'm that person who's that extra. I'm just like, oh my God, I love it. And it's so beautiful. And the colors and how it moves in the light a little bit, you know, how when you move it around, love all that. And so if your goal is to create a space that you're going to do a chore that you don't necessarily like to do, make it just a little prettier, a little fancier, a little more attractive. That will make you enjoy the space so much more. I pass by the laundry now and I stop. And I'm like, oh, look at that. And I keep on working because it, it, it's attractive. Why not? And if you're trying to save money, don't do the whole room. Do an accent wall. Do a feature wall. You will still have that pop of color, that pop of elegance. Mm -hmm. um, but you know what? You, you, you save by just doing one side of it. And in, in all honesty, it's such a beautiful tile that excess of it would just be too much right just the right touch I took my 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 towel sheet to to the Home Depot store and uh, I matched the paint color so that I could do the the other walls in the complementary bluish color um and I'm loving it and I added custom shells that I did not need but I wanted and that's okay and they're probably not going to hold anything but decorative items and towels, but that's also okay because I've made allowances for actual storage um, underneath the washer dryer with now I added a sink and I added three cabinets and I added two upper cabinets. So it's always a balance, right? That we're going to have the functionality as well as the pretty. And if that makes you happy, then you should do it. Yes. The only time I stop when I walk past my laundry room is to close the door because it's usually a wreck. <laughs> so I um, love that you've taken that space and made it something beautiful that you enjoy being in and probably even doing the work like, oh, this isn't so bad because it feels nice. I mean, and beautiful. Even my husband, he didn't understand the reason why we should have done it. He's like, okay. But now he's like, it looks nice in here. Yeah. Okay. For him, that's huge. <laughs> Like, huge. <laughs> I've been there. I've been with my husband since 1999. For him to have said that, it's it's like him basically saying he loves it. Yeah, I love that. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome! Making such an impact in your home—that's fantastic. We cannot wait to see. I've seen the floating shelves that you had installed, um, and then, but I can't wait to see the paint color and the cabinets and everything. It sounds dreamy. Um, <laughs> So we would love to, you mentioned having two rambunctious little kids, which is amazing. I'm to a mother and our company tile club is actually a woman owned company. So most of us have children. We like, we get it. We get it. So tell us a little bit about balancing motherhood, um, with being an influencer and DIY designer. Can you share some ways that you manage these roles and how they even influence each other? Um, well, in addition to all of that, I've now added, um, social media coach to my roster. So, uh, yeah, so the list has gotten longer. Um, you know, I think it's just, for me, it was, I had to sit down and make a plan, right? Because that's how I start out with, with everything I do. Have a vision, have a plan. And once you have your plan, you're going to determine what's most important in that plan. And my family comes first. Um, I worked very hard to have a family because for a long time, we just couldn't get pregnant. And so our children are truly a blessing to us. And so I schedule my week in such a way that I work about four days a week. And the rest of the time is mostly spent with, with the kids. Um, and I try to sneak in, you know, a good half a day here and there for myself for some self-care. But the rest of the time with you, our life revolves around our family. And the way we do that is with planning. And we actually plan stuff out. We plan out the week, we plan out the meals, that helps. We plan out dates for sure so that we can still keep dating each other. 
um, and we, because our, our children can also consume us, okay? Mm -hmm. They have, my son is in soccer practice and basketball and, and, and he does softball. And my, my daughter is in dance and she's in also in uh, ballet and now she's gonna take piano lessons. They have lots of activities. And so it's really how you carve out your, your time and, and don't apologize for taking time out for yourself. That's really important because if I'm empty, I can't give anything. And it's really great to have a partner like my husband because he can see in my face when I'm, I'm done. And I can also see the same thing. And I'm like, okay, why don't you go upstairs? I'll just stay with the kids for a little bit. No, go, just go upstairs. And he'll do the same with me. So the, the work-life balance that I have working from home is far better than I had working my dream job because I couldn't control that. I went to work every day at nine until five. That became nine until eight or seven. Um, whereas now I can work while the kids are at school. Then I can still pop in to go to a um, recital that they're having in, in, the, in the middle of the day. I can go in, in the morning to do Dear, Dear Reader. Um, I can do so many, uh, there's much more flexibility but it really comes down to having a good plan and, and being flexible with, with that plan. You know, Like I said, I have a goal that I work four days a week where I film and I edit and I shoot. And then the rest of the three days, it's like, mm, that's just for me and the kids. But sometimes those, those, those three days could be half a day on Monday, half a day on Tuesday, <laughs> but rarely is it three straight days, but I still kind of plan out the day because at some point you have to close the book and say, okay, it's now time for family. It's now time for Farah. It's now time for Farah and her husband. You've got to do that because if not, you'll quickly burn out. It's so true. Thank you for sharing that. I'm sure there are a lot of moms that needed to hear that. Um, and, you know, I had someone give me some really great advice years ago when I went through being a single mom for a time, um, now remarried to a wonderful man. Uh, but she told me, you know, when you're on the airplane, and something's the turbulence is happening or the plane's going down you've got to put the oxygen mask on yourself so that you can help your children you can help others around you but if you are you know deprived of that first you're not gonna be able to be of any use to anyone yourself included absolutely and for some reason we are conditioned to feel guilt for taking care of ourselves and we have to break that cycle we are not supposed to feel guilty for taking care of ourselves because when we're our best selves, then we can give our best. That's mm -hmm. when I'm less cranky. That's when I'm more patient with my children. That's when I'm more understanding with my husband. So I need to have me time and I'm unapologetic about it now. I had to learn that, you know, there are steps. I mean, we all go through, oh my God, do I feel, but we have to work through it. Most definitely. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. That was a good reminder for me today as well. Um, fantastic. So let's move on to our last few questions. Um, so we know that all renovation projects can have their ups and downs. And can you speak sure. to some of the pros and cons you've experienced while renovating? And even if some of those are with tiles, we would love to hear kind of the snafus that may have occurred during your renovation projects? Um, when working with contractors, research, 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 always make sure your contractor is licensed. Um, with regards to snafus, you know, there've been quite a few blunders. <laughs> um, I was painting one time and I accidentally knocked the whole paint thing onto the floor, onto the brand new carpet. You know, and we had to call home people back and get new carpet because you just can't wash that stuff off. Mm -hmm. um, some things you have to, 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 to take in strides. Um, like I said, again, the most, the, 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 the funniest part is you're never finished okay? because you can be done, but then you're still missing the light cover plate, you know, a few little things here and there. Mm -hmm. um, it's really about taking it in strides. Um, I've, I, we recently had a plumbing issue that I had to laugh my way through because if I didn't, I was gonna cry. We had the plumbing installed, everything sounded great, but then the contractor said something that made me feel uneasy. So I'm like, let's get a master plumber just to come and double check what he did. Uh -huh. Come to find out that they actually had accidentally punched some holes 
in the new plumbing that they had installed before they put up before before they put the the, the new flooring. So which meant that I would have been downstairs having dinner and we would have had just water just dribbling all over us because so then we had to open the ceiling and redo all that extra work and redo all the plumbing. Again, like I said, I tried it. Now I can look at it and go, okay, it was a blessing in disguise because at least we got it done right, regardless of the fact that it costs twice as much. But at the time, whew, lots of wusa moments. Yeah. <laughs> lots of wusa moments. But I try to look at things, I really do try to look at things positively. I try to look at things like, I've built an influencer career in which we were able to make the, the additional changes without financially hurting. And so I try to really look at things as, as positively as I can, because what's done is done, right? What am I going to do? Mm -hmm. Fix it. That's why it's called the fair fix. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to try to fix it because there's nothing else I can do. What's, what's done is done. I've learned the lesson. But one of the things I say, especially if you're doing DIY on, on your own, um, it's gonna take twice as long as it's supposed to, okay? Because I always plan things from for myself. Oh, and I have this thing which I call big eyes. I have such a great long vision of all the things I want, and then it's like, oh, the budget, or it's like, yeah. oh, the time, <laughs> oh, the this. Um, so try to have fun with it. Try to learn things differently. It's a great way of, of bonding with your spouse. Um, my husband call, calls it, it's a great way for him to be bossed around, you know, potato, potato, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it is what, but what I like the most, what's been most fulfilling for me is seeing my children understand that this is mommy's job, that mommy doesn't just stay at home, although there's nothing wrong with staying at home, but they understand that this is, and then they come and they say, mommy, this is really nice. I like it. It looks really nice, mommy. And the fact that they're able to appreciate and then they help me clean up because they now say, our kitchen is so nice, mommy. We have to, ha we have to have chores. Because you're gonna, you're gonna pay me $1 a week, right? I'll do this chores. So they're vested and they're interested and they know about things. And I, that is to me is priceless because you're raising children who are aware and understand and also value you in a different light because they see, they understand that this is the result of work. Yes. What a valuable lesson. And, and what a wonderful influence you are in your children, showing them kind of that labor of love, um, creating, you know, a safe, wonderful, just welcoming environment that they can appreciate and enjoy living in, but also probably inspiring them to look at being their own boss someday and, and kind of that the sky's the limit, you know, they can create whatever Absolutely. they want to. I've always said, if, if I can see it, I, I can be it. Mm -hmm. And I think in so many ways, especially with girls and also with boys, because my, my son's interpretation of things, he's so much open, he's so open-minded about things. Like he doesn't think of things as that's something only daddies would do. Like he sees me using uh, power tools and he's like, yeah, that's mom. She's using power tools. So. And I love that. I love that they take that that for granted because it becomes normal. Mm. We expect that anyone with any skill can do X and X and X. And it comes down to the skill and to the de determination that you put in behind the work. And I like that a lot about them. That is so awesome. Yeah. Very, very cool. And priceless, like you said, lessons that your children are learning. So to close up our conversation, I feel like this went by so fast and I've enjoyed no. every moment of it. Um, but I would love to um, ask you one more question to wrap up today. So what advice do you have for other women who are considering stepping into the DIY space? Do it. <clears throat> Just do it. Just start. Start small. Start by replacing um, light fixtures. Um, when I say light fixtures, I mean just like the, the cover plates on the switches, start small. Um, understand your limitations. By that, I mean, understand when it's okay to call the licensed plumber, the licensed electrician. You know, don't put yourself in harm's way. But there are so many little things that I realized that I could do. Like I can install the organizational system in my pantry. 
I can outfit my um, cabinets. I can do those things. I can use small power tools. I can use a drill. I can use a drill bit. If I don't know, I can go to Home Depot and ask questions or I can go to Lowe's. Um, you can do a lot more than you think. And more importantly, when you think of how those things add up, because if you have a handyman type of a person come in, they're still gonna charge for, for their time and rightly so. But when you look at what you could have saved and then you could have taken that and invested it in something bigger that you wanna do, you know, pick up a paintbrush, it's okay. You can do crown molding, you can do shoe molding. Um, just, that's how I started. I started doing small things. You can replace all of the hardware in your cabinetry. Start small. And then before you know it, you'll start to build. And then draw draw up plans, you know, go online, find a community, um, go on Pinterest. You can find me anywhere at the Farafix on YouTube and Pinterest, on Instagram, on Facebook. You can find me. Um, send me a DM. I love to collaborate. I love to talk with people. I love to answer questions that they have. But whatever you're 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 thinking, start. Just start doing it. And before you know it, it will grow. That's a wonderful advice. Thank you so much for sharing that. And as we wrap up, Farah, can you tell us a little bit about your academy that you are getting ready to start or have started just so that yeah. our listeners can know what's coming for you? So I recently started, I started it a long time ago, but I didn't um, do it on this scale. And so I've learned or come across so many women who are wanting to figure out how to monetize their influence, right? And how to actually create impact online. And so having been fortunate enough to work with so many different brands, wonderful brands over the last four years, but two years specifically as a content creator full-time, <clears throat> I share my insights on how they can hone in on their personal brand and really develop that brand and leverage it so that they're then able to monetize it. And what that does, it allows them to reclaim their time, to reclaim whatever. I don't care if you're wanting to do it for as a career, as a full-time career, as what I like to call a side hustle, but think of different ways that you can use your influence to say, send your kids to summer camp, send yourself to a spa treatment every week, or do something nice for your parents, or send your kids to private school. There is such an opportunity available online. I've, I've been thankful enough to make multiple six figures every year for the last two years by monetizing and leveraging my social media presence. And so I teach women how to do that. We have courses, we have one-on-one -on -one coaching, we have workshops, we have challenges that we do. I have a new challenge that, that that's about to start um, in a week. So we have lots of ways for women really to, I, as a, I went, my career in corporate America was in corporate communications and marketing and PR. And I did that for years. I can't imagine the idea of me just being at home. That's just not for me. I need to be doing something. And so this was my thing. You know, I found a love of home decor and, and, and family and being online and sharing. And that has just translated into a full blown career. So I'm super excited about it. So wonderful. What an inspiring conversation today. Thank you so much for your time, Farah. We will be sure to link everything from Academy to website to all social links and where our listeners can find you. And we are just so grateful for the opportunity that we've had to talk with you and collaborate with you. So thank you so much. I've loved this. I've enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful week and we look forward to hearing more from you soon. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Vera. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.